शोदनंदन भ्रजनारंजन शोदनंदन भ्रजनारंजन यमुना तेरा वनचारे जय हो राधा माधवा जय कुंज बेहरे जय हो राधा माधवा जय कुंज बेहरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे राधमाधवाष्टर श्लोक ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया यस्मा अधाद उदीर उदा भयंग वेपो मार्ग सपादारे पुरा हरवादिदाक्ष दूरे सुहृन्मतिषा सुषोन दृष्ट्या तथाप्यमकारो राग मक्रचक्र यस्मादुदीरुदयांग वेपो मगांस पदिपूर हरवादिदाक्ष दूरे सुहृन्मतिषोन दृष्ट्या 
tataapyamana makaro roaga makra chakra please chant Mataji, please. Word by word, Yasme, unto whom Adat gave Udhade the great Indian Ocean, Udabhaya, affected by fear, Angavepa, bodily trembling, Margam. Way, Sapade, quickly, Aripuram, the city of the enemy, Haravat, like that of Hara, Mahadev, Didaksho, desiring to burn to ashes, Dure, at a long distance, Sukhrit, Intimate friend, Matita, being aggrieved by, Rosha, in anger, Sushona, red hot, Drishtya, by such a glance, Tatapyamana, burning in heat, Makara, Sharks, Raga, snakes, Nakra, crocodiles, Chakra, circles. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Sri Prabhupada. The personality of Godhead, Ramachandra, being aggrieved for his distant intimate friend, Sita, glanced over the city of the enemy Ravana with red-hot eyes like those of Hara, who wanted to burn the kingdom of heaven. The great ocean, trembling in fear, gave him his way because its family members, the aquatics, like the sharks, snakes, and crocodiles, 
were being burned by the heat of the angry red hot eyes of the Lord. Purport. The personality of Godhead has every sentiment of a sentient being, like all other living beings. Because he is the chief and original living entity, the supreme source of all other living beings. He is the Nitya, or the chief eternal amongst all other eternals. He is the chief one, and all others are the dependent many. The many eternals are supported by the one eternal, and thus both the eternals are qualitatively one. Due to such oneness, both the eternals constitutionally have a complete range of sentiments. But the difference is that the sentiments of the chief eternal are different in quantity from the sentiments of the dependent eternals. When Ramachandra was angry and showed his red hot eyes, the whole ocean became heated with that energy so much so that the aquatics within the great ocean felt the heat and the personified ocean trembled in fear and offered the Lord an easy path for reaching the enemy's city. The impersonalists will see havoc in this red-hot sentiment of the Lord because they want to see negation in perfection. Because the Lord is absolute, the impersonalists imagine that in the absolute, the sentiment of anger, which resembles mundane sentiments, must be conspicuous by absence. Due to poor fund of knowledge, they do not realize that the sentiment of the absolute person is transcendental to all mundane concepts of quality and quantity. Had Lord Ramachandra's sentiment been of mundane origin, how could it disturb the whole ocean and its inhabitants? Can any mundane red-hot eye generate heat in the great ocean? These are factors to be distinguished in terms of the personal and impersonal conceptions of the Absolute Truth. As it is said in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Absolute Truth is the source of everything. So the absolute person cannot be devoid of the sentiments that are reflected, reflected in the temporary mundane world. Rather, the different sentiments found in the absolute, either in anger or in mercy, have the same qualitative influence. Or in other words, there is no mundane difference in value because these sentiments are all on the absolute plane. Such sentiments are definitely not absent in the Absolute as the impersonalists think, making their mundane estimation of the transcendental world. Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Guravani Pracharine Nishesha Sunyavadi Pasya Pradesh Tharine E Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagadpate Govesha Gobika Kanta Radha Kanta Namos to Te Tapta Kanchana Gorangir Hade Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gorat Vishena Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadar Shivasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Is this, is this audible? I'm audible? Or it's a little weak? It's not good, eh? Can anybody do to fix this, the sound? Try? Because with the fans, nobody will hear anything and I can be speaking. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare, is it better now? Now it's better, if it stays like this. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So here in this log, we hear about Lord Ramachandra's anger. Again, not audible? Or only when I, you know, point at a certain angle. Maybe I should just hold it in my hand. I don't know what is it. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. No, it's disconnecting there. Something is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can can I try that one? Hare Krishna. This line looks better. Okay, I'll just hold it in my hand. It's much better. So here we hear that Lord Ramachandra, he became very angry. And that anger was so powerful that uh, it heated the ocean and the wild animals, aquatics in the water, they feel burned. So what kind of anger? It's so powerful that it burns everybody around him. And if you look, only 17 verses before. Uh, we have a shloka in the same chapter. I think it was a shloka 7 that says that anger can never enter the heart of the Lord. I'll remind you. The shloka 7. Great stalwarts like Lord Shiva can, by their wrathful glances, overcome lust and vanquish him Yet they cannot be free from the overwhelming effects of their own wrath. Such wrath or anger can never enter into the heart of him, the Lord, who is above all this. So how can lust take shelter in his mind? So clearly we have stated here that uh, anger can never enter the heart of the Lord. It can enter the heart of Lord Shiva, but not the heart of Lord Vishnu or Krishna. And in this regard, it's described the past time when the Lord Shiva was doing tapasya, he was meditating. And Cupid, he came there to provoke him. He threw the arrows uh, of, uh, of lust, of sex desire. And uh, Lord Shiva, he became very angry at him. He glanced at him and he burned him. So that's why it's Cupid called Hananga without the limbs. Uh, so although he, Lord Shiva was so powerful, he was not be able to get free from effects of anger. But on contrary, uh, the Lord Vishnu, who is the greatest of all, he is above all material contaminations such as anger, lust, greed, illusion, madness, and envy. So it was once discussed on, uh, again, in this same shloka, it was described how once the sages in the bank of Saraswati, they were performing tapasya and they were discussing who is the supreme am amongst the three main deities in the universe, Lord Brahma, Shiva, or Vishnu. So they deputed Brigumoni to, to test which of these deities has the quality of goodness in full, in total. Because that would be the, the proof uh, that he is above anger. 
one who is mo the most tolerant is the greatest of all. So if you, re if you remember the show story, the Brigu Muni, first he went to Lord Shiva, who is his, uh, his brother. Or he went first to the Lord Brahma. How was it? I think, yeah. First he went uh, to Lord Brahma. Yeah, first to Lord Brahma, who is his father. And uh, he just entered in the assembly of Lord Brahma and didn't show any sign of respect. He just entered and behaved like a Lord Brahma and he on the same level. Usually when you enter the presence of your father or a guru or any superior, you are supposed to show some signs of respect, like over obeisances, at least fold your hands over some pleasant words. But Brigo Muni, he, he didn't do this. And the Lord Brahma became very angry, observing this lack of etiquette. So anger arose within his mind and heart, but he was able to subdue it. He was able to, you know, to, to control it by his intelligence. Although he was ready to curse his son, but he remembered he is a my, my junior, my son, so I'll, I'll be tolerant. But clearly the signs of anger were visible on his body. So Brigamuni noted it and left. Then he went to the Mount, Mount Kailash, the abode of Lord Shiva. And this time he committed a greater offense. The offense committed to Lord Brahma was in the mind. He just didn't do what he was supposed to do. But now when he met Lord Shiva, who is his brother, Lord Shiva immediately, when he saw him, he rose up and went forward to embrace him. But uh, Brigomoni said, no, 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 don't touch me. You are smeared with anger, with, uh, with ashes, and you are contaminated, you're not clean. So in this way, he offended him by his words. And Lord Shiva, when, when he heard that, he became so angry and was ready, you know, to kill him with his trident. But Parvati, the mother Parvati, she fell in front of the feet of Lord Shiva and uh, buried him to spare Brigumuni, who was his brother. Again, Brigumuni noted this exhibition of anger. And he went further, he went to Shvetadvip, where the Lord Vishnu was lying. <coughs> And uh, Goddess Lakshmi was massaging his feet. And what did he did do? He did the greatest offense. He did the offense by kicking the Lord Vishnu in his chest with his foot, which is even in uh, you know in the ordinary world, in in ordinary dealings, it's uh, it's considered very very offensive. If you if you unprovoked any reason, you, you know, you, you, you meet a person on the street and you hit him in, in the chest or in the face, it's a punishable, it's a criminal offense. So this is exactly what Lord, uh, what Brigu Muni did to, to Lord Vishnu. And what was Lord Vishnu's reaction? He told him, oh, welcome Brahmana, please sit on this chair and rest a while. Kindly forgive us, dear master, for not noticing your arrival. Sanctify us by giving us a water of your lotus feet. <laughs> and then, yeah. you just put it here, just in case. And then he said, today, my Lord, I have become exclusive shelter of the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. She will consent to reside on my chest because your foot had touched my chest. And since then, the, the Lord has sign of, of uh, Brigu Pada, the foot of the, of the Brigu, as the mark of tolerance. So it was an unimaginable exhibition of, of tolerance. Absolutely zero sign of any anger, of any croda, of any wrath. And this is a proof that the Lord is never affected by any kind of anger. And then, so how can there be any lust in, a, in him? Because lust is less powerful than anger. 
So in some scriptures, uh, like uh, Old Testament, uh, for example, we have a picture of angry God with the rod of punishment, ready you know, to punish and kill everybody. But this concept of angry God is, is uh, not very attractive and not very valid because of what causes anger. Anger is due to frustration, inability to get what you want, what we want. But if you are God, how can you, how can you ever not get what you want? That means that you are not, uh, in, you're not all-powerful Ishwara. If you are frustrated due to an ability to satisfy your own desires, that means you are fallible. If you are fallible, you cannot be God. So that, that concept of angry God, it just doesn't fit properly in the, in the, in the very definition of God, of, of the supreme controller, supreme Ishwara, who can fulfill his own desires as, as he wants. So again, this concludes that, uh, and Prabhupada also in that purport, in that shloka, he says, conclusion is that the Lord is above all material lust and anger. The supreme person, absolute personality has neither lust nor anger, or even if there is a sometimes a show of lust and anger by the absolute, it should be considered the absolute benediction. So although there is no material lust and anger in the Lord's heart, sometimes there must be some show or exhibition of that anger or lust. And that should be considered absolute benediction. So his anger, his lust, uh, his illusion and other sentiments that might appear in the transcendental world, they are completely different from lust, anger, etc. of this material world. Uh, anger, lust of this material world, they are just reflections of the original spiritual sentiments that exist in the spiritual world, which impersonally try to deny thinking because the anger and lust of the material world, they're bad. There must be no anger and lust in the, on the spiritual plane. Material sentiments like anger and lust and others, they're products of three gunas of material nature. And such they are binding force, karma and kroda. So they're obstacle in, on devotional path also in, in a spiritual life, they're, they're great obstacle. So Raghunath Das Goswami in his Manashiksha, he warns the sadhakas about the, the danger of these enemies on the path of devotion. He says, Asachishta kasta prada vikata pashalibir iha prakaman kamadi prakata patta pati vyati kare. He says, while on the revealed path of devotion, on the path of bhakti, I have been attacked by dangerous decoits headed by lust, anger, and so on. And these decoits, they bound my neck with the troublesome, dreadful robes of wicked deeds. And then he says, Gale badva hanye ham iti bakabid vatma pagane kurutvam putkaran avati sayathatvam mana ittaha. He says, I'm being killed. Hanyaham, Hanyaham, I'm being killed. Cried out piteously like this. To whom? To the devotees of Sri Krishna, who is the destroyer of Baka. So he's preaching to his own mind. Oh mind, they will save you from these enemies. So these are the enemies, the anger specifically that we are talking about now. So these assembled aggressors on the road, the decoits on the road, the Kama, Kroda, Loba, Moha, Mada, and Matsarya, the six famous, famous uh, enemies of the living entity. Lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy. So assembled together these decades, they assail the victims on the path of conditioned life and also on the path of sadhaka in the spiritual life. So how it works, how they, t 
throw the conditional living entity into the illusion it's described in, in Bhagavad Gita, if you, if you remember in the second chapter, Krishna describes Jyato Vishyam Pumsa Sangasti Shupajati. While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. So we have many examples of a yogi who tries to meditate and then somebody like Indra sends Apsara and just for a blink of an eye he notices that Apsara. He closes his eye again but the picture, the samskara of that beautiful form of Apsara is in his mind and he just cannot get it out of the mind. He contemplates, he contemplates. So when the sense objects such as sound, touch, form and so on, they are meditated upon uh, with a desire to attain some gratification from them, then uh, due to this contemplation, a strong, strong attachment for these sense objects arises in the mind. And then Sangan Sanjayati Kama, from such attachment, lust to enjoy those objects ar arises in the heart. So lust is, is a strong desire to enjoy those objects that appear in the mind. And uh, <clears throat> if the yogi like, is very powerful, like Lord Shiva, he is able to control, he is able to check the fulfillment of that desire. He says, no, I will not get up. I will not run after that apsara. <laughs> but then, as the result of this unsatisfied desire, as the result of this dissatisfaction in the heart, what appears? It's Kroda. It's anger appears there. And then that anger burns the heart and is disturbing the, lo uh, the yogi, even if he is powerful as Lord Shiva. So, Kamat Krodo Vijayate, from lust, uh, anger arises. And then Krodat Bhavati Samoha, and from anger, delusion, bewilderment arises. And then Samohat Smriti Vibrama, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory means that there is a loss of discrimination of what should be done and, and what should not be done and the next stage is smriti brahmshat buddhinasho buddhinashat pranashati from bewilderment of memory intelligence is vanquished and when intelligence is vanquished one becomes again immersed in material enjoyment he falls down in a material pool so he tries to enjoy the material world again as before he started a spiritual practice. So in this way the soul is entrapped, uh, entrapped in the cycle of material existence and suffers due to these six enemies from which the anger is the most strong. So among the, those who have this anger, lust, and other material emotions. When one emotion comes to the surface, for example, when the anger comes to the surface, that doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, <coughs> Kama, Moha, Loba are not present. They are also present in the heart, but they are just below the surface. They are in, in, in the Chitta. They are just not exhibited. They are present in the form of impressions. But at one time, one of those comes to the surface, comes externally, that you can observe it. So that's why in the spiritual life, conquering karma and kroda is absolute must in order to make, to make advancement. Again, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, karma kroda vimuktanam yatinam yattachetasam atitto brahma nirvanam vartate viditatmanam. Those who are free from anger and all material desires who are self-realized, self-disciplined, and constantly endeavoring for perfection, are short of liberation in the supreme, in the very near future. So, kama kroda vimuktanam is, is a necessary qualification for liberation and for making advancement. So, how this kama and kroda conquered? We all want to know how can we just conquer them? Well, the most simple answer is by, by bhakti by devotional service, by worship of the Lord. And for that worship, one quality is absolutely necessary. 
and that's call, and that's tolerance. That devotional service must be accompanied by tolerance. That's why we have Lord Chaitanya stressing so much. One's tolerance is the indication of one's greatness. The, great, the greater you are, the greater tolerance you have. Since the Lord is never affected by any material lust and anger, He is the most tolerant person and He is the greatest of all. There is nobody in the world more tolerant than the Lord. And then, of course, His devotees who are totally surrendered and dedicated to Him can attain the same level of tolerance. Srila Prabhupada gives a nice example in, in a Krishna book. He says, the example is given that the small lamps may become agitated by little breeze, but the greatest lamp or the greatest illuminating source, the sun, is never moved, even by the greatest hurricane. One's greatness has to be estimated by one's ability to provoke, to tolerate provoking situation. So did you ever find yourself in some provoking situation? No, never. <laughs> did, you, did you tolerate or you got a little upset or angry? I know, no, nobody got upset. It's, 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 not, it's very difficult. <laughs> if we see, for example, Lord Chaitanya in, a, in a Puri, when Ramachandra Puri came, and criticized the Lord for eating sweets, for doing this, for doing that. What did the Lord do? He got upset, he got angry. No, no, he, he reduced his eating, he, he, he cut his eating in half. So he, he exhibited the tolerance. And then we have again, great example of tolerance by Srila Haridas Thakur. You know, they whipped him in the marketplace, in 21 marketplace, they practically, you know, wanted to kill him, uh, they harmed his body. He exhibited zero anger, zero. He was absolutely not upset with them. Contrary, on the contrary, he prayed for their deliverance. So these are the examples that we should look upon. Sometimes we are very easily offended there were small, small things and we get angry in, in, in a second. So this is just indication that we have some you know, not fulfilled desires uh, that, that uh, you know, that are deep inside of, of the mind. Uh, ag aggression below the surface of the conscious mind. Sometimes you have people who are very, you know, nice and kind and they, supposedly they never get angry, but then you hear that person at one moment, you know, there are some stories in the news, you know, he went and on the street and he shoot you know, 10 innocent people, or he went to the school and killed children. Just recently, a, a month ago, I, I read such, such a news, you know. He was a, just a 13 years old boy, and he was a very good student, always peaceful, not talking much. And one day he came with a gun and he shot nine other students with no reason. Because means in his, you know, in his uh, uh, heart he had a... Uh, some frustration, some anger that he was, you know, suppressing, suppressing, and repressing. But uh, eventually he couldn't hold it anymore and it just came out and then he killed. So we have to learn to tolerate, but not only suppressing that anger because it will sooner come out, uh, sooner or later will come out. Uh, but but uh, looking what is the cause of, of that anger which means our material desires are, are behind this anger. So letting go of these material desires, giving up on these material desires will uh, uh, help us uh, get rid of the anger. So tolerance also doesn't mean that in all cases we are not taking any action, we are just a passive and dull like, like, a, like a tree. In some circumstances we need to act, uh, especially if one is in a position of uh, of authority or protector or sh like kshatriya position and his dependence under him are harmed or abused. If you don't react, you, you, you get a sinful reaction. You have to. Marj Parishit, he was uh, ready to kill the, the person of Kali when he was harming Dharma. 
So we have also great example of uh, Arajasuya sacrifice uh, where Lord Krishna was killing Shishupar. It was, it was great yagya, many kings were there. Uh, and on day of extracting the Soma juice, it was discussed uh, who should be worshipped uh, first, uh, the most exalted person in the assembly. And Sahadev, one of the five Pandavas, he said, certainly it's Achyuta, the supreme personality of Godhead, and the chief of the Yadavas who deserves the highest position. He himself composes all the demigods worshipping the sacrifice. That's why he should be worshipped first. And all assembled, almost all assembled in assembly, they applauded this. And uh, Maharaj Yudhishthira, when he, he, he got indication, he, he worshipped Lord Krishna with his brothers. He washed uh, the Lord's feet and did the arati and then sprinkled the water. But when that worship was done, one person, he got up. Who was that? It was Shishupal. And he started offending the Lord very heavily. He said, how does this coward boy, the disgrace of his family, deserves your worship any more than a crow deserves to eat this, the sacred Purudosha rice cake? How does one who follows no principles of the social and spiritual orders, who has been excluded from all religious duties, who behaves whimsically, who has no good qualities, how does such a person deserves to be worshipped. So he continued offending and offending Krishna more and more. And the Lord, what did he do? He did not react at first at all. And there was a no change. Nobody could notice any anger appearing on him. He was completely indifferent, listening the Shishupas offenses. But then the other present, the others who were present in the assembly, hearing this intolerable blasphemy of the Lord, some of them, they covered their ears and walked out. Because it's explained, if you stay in a place where the saintly person or supreme personality of God has, is offended, you get the sinful reactions. So one is uh, ordered to immediately leave such a place. And, uh, and the five pandas, what did they do? They, they got so angry, they, they took out their swords and they were ready to kill Shishupal. And the same Sahadev, uh, he, who, who was praising the Lord, he began to shake, uh, you know, he was completely shaking out of anger. So here we, we see the example of the Lord's devotees become overcome with the anger. But that anger was not for their own sake. It was because the Lord was offending. So their anger was completely spiritual. It was a part of their bhakti. It was used in the Lord's service. But the Lord, he didn't want blood, any blood spilled in the Rajasuya sacrifice. He, he just checked his devotees and told them, just stay peaceful. And he took his Sudarshan chakra and he cut off uh, Shishupal's head without any anger. <clears throat> so proper application of anger is what? When the Lord is offended and his devotees are offended, we should get angry. Not getting angry in this situation is a fault. That anger should be used in the Lord's service. So in this way, you have to make distinction between the real spiritual sentiments and their material counterparts or reflections. So more spiritually advanced we are, more spiritually awake we are, more we develop these spiritual sentiments, including spiritual anger. So spiritual anger, material anger, they are completely different, like lust and love. That's why there is a no part in this shloka that we read on Lord Ramachandra becoming angry, because his anger is nothing that, that we can imagine. It's, it's, completely, it's completely spiritual. It has nothing to do with the moods of material nature. It's not coming from the gunas of material nature. And similarly, the anger of, of pure devotees uh, also has nothing to do with the mode of, uh, modes of material nature. And we see quite a few examples in the Shastra, the Lord getting angry, like, like this example of Lord Ramachandra getting angry, 
Can anybody uh, remember any other examples of Lord getting angry? Yes, Prabhu. Nisimhadev, of course. He got so angry at uh, Hinakashipu. And then Varahadev, he got so angry at uh, Hirani. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at Hiranyaksha. And then Lord, there is an example of Lord Chaitanya uh, smashing pots uh, when he asked his mother to bring him uh, some chandan and some, some tulsi for for worship and uh, it was not immediately available so he got so angry he started smashing everything in the house and Mother Sachi was just standing there <laughs> so what happened <laughs> and then again Lord Jitana getting angry at uh, Advaita Charya when uh, Advaita Charya was preaching some Mayavad philosophy and, and beating him uh, who was senior to him he got so angry <laughs> And then uh, we have example Lord Nityananda cursing the sons of Shivananda Siena when they were on the way to Bori. And uh, it happened that uh, Lord Nityananda didn't get uh, his residence in Prasadam, so he got upset and he cursed the sons of uh, Shivananda. And Shivananda's wife, she got so afraid. But Shivananda told her, shut up, you stupid woman. <laughs> if all my sons die, let all my sons die if Lord Nityananda is unhappy. He was completely untouched by it, Lord Nityananda's anger. That means that Lord's anger is completely transcendental, has nothing to do with the modes of material nature. And we have Lord Parashuram, who, who killed the Kshatriyas, all the Kshatriyas on earth, 21 times. And it's, it's said that uh, Lord Parashuram, he re represents the Raudra Rasa, the Rasa of anger. And in case of devotees, when anger appears, or pure devotees, then it's, uh, anger is described as one of the sattvic bhavas, uh, the, the secondary rati. For example, here in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we have example, when Krishna, the rain cloud, for the Chattaka birds of her eyes was brought to Mathura. Yashoda Mai, turning red faced in anger, began to scold Nanda Maharaj with a choked voice. So she exhibited the signs of anger uh, at Nanda because Krishna didn't come back from Mathura. But that's that's a result of her love for Krishna. It's not the result of material moods. So it's called Krodarate. And then it's again, it is writing Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu how, how Arjuna, uh, when Ashwatthama became eager to shoot arrows at Krishna, the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Arjuna, although very, very fast to respond, became completely motionless out of anger that, uh, that Ashwatthama was trying to harm Krishna. And during the, the pastime uh, of lifting Govardhan Hill, Garuda was observing that pastime from behind the clouds and then when he saw what, what Indra was doing, although he was situated in the clouds at a distance, he, Garuda became completely filled with anger and, and the, the drops of perspiration came from, from Garuda's limbs. Uh, so it's again one example of, of Krodarate and there are so many more. So just to make a point that the spiritual anger is something completely, completely different. It's something that enhances one's love for Krishna. It's a result of one's love for Krishna. It has nothing to do with the anger that we experience here in the material world. We have also example of Srila Prabhupada sometimes getting angry. There is example, I think it was told by Nava Yogendra Maharaj when he was a Prabhupada servant. Uh, there was a one devotee who was standing in front of Prabhupada's door and when Prabhupada would ring his bell, that servant was supposed to come. So Prabhupada was ringing the, the bell, but the servant was not there. Somehow he wandered off somewhere. And uh, Prabhupada was telling to Navayogendra, where is this boy? Rascal, why is he not here? He's supposed to be here. Tell him immediately to come. So when, the, when they brought the boy, the, the Prabhupada blasted him. Uh, this is your duty. You're neglecting your service. He chastised him very heavily. And when the boy left, uh, Navayogendra Maharaj, he noticed the Prabhupada immediately became completely person, peaceful, and started speaking as normal, without any you know, change in his voice. That means that he was just exhibiting anger to teach his disciple. Actually, he was not, it was not anger 
born from the modes of material nature. It just looked like from externally. But no, Prabhupada was not affecting, affected by anger. He just wanted to teach his disciple to make impression on him that he should be very attentive in his service. There is another example when they were installing the, in Amsterdam the, the deities of Jagannath Bala and Subhadra and everything was so spaced out and Prabhupada again had to, to get very angry uh, and uh, to, to shout at them to do their service properly. But immediately after that, you know, he, he gave a class and it was completely peaceful. That means it was not material anger exhibited by Shila Prabhupada. Anyway, we don't have more time. I have to stop now. If there are any short comments or questions before nine o'clock. Yes, Prabhu, here's the mic. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, thank you for the wonderful class. You. you said a very golden statement, I can say. The greatness of a person can be estimated by his ability to tolerate provoking situations. Mm. So, sometimes provoking situations when it comes, like someone insults you or treats you badly, you can detect it and it's, you can understand that it's a provoking situation and you tolerate it. Sometimes it's tolerable. But the provoking situation when it is in a positive way, someone gives you extra prasad, gives you an offer to come and have opulent meals, you know, someone glorifies you. You don't even notice it that we are being provoked and we go along with the flow. So, how do we tolerate this situation where the things are very... Uh, palatable for us. Yes, thank you. This is the example in the positive situations when we are praised, we become proud. We are, uh, we are, we are attacked by another en enemy, no, not the Kroda, but the <laughs> Mada. <laughs> so how to tolerate? Well, again, we should follow the example of the Lord. The Lord, when He's praised, He's not exhilarated. Uh, he remains composed and peaceful. So it takes... Uh, it takes some humility, it takes some practice to understand our position, how small and insignificant we are. So that this praise, okay, it's nice, uh, they're expressing some good sentiments, but in reality it's not true. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that what they are saying. I'm just a small, small servant and I don't deserve this praise. And I, I can offer this praise to my spiritual master and, and to other great devotees, but it's not actually meant for me. I can take it and offer it further to Guru Parampara. So we have to be aware of our position. Okay, is there anything else? Yes, Mataj, please. Thank you, Prabhu, for a very nice class, uh, clearly bringing out the difference between material anger and spiritual anger. So I have a question. I am new to Mayapur. I'm still getting used to the place and the people. So how should we see when people don't show up on time, they don't deliver the goods as they said they would? In every twist and turn, there are very provoking situations that come in the way of your devotional service because people just don't keep their word, they don't follow any you know, time schedule, and the things you have lined up start getting delayed, you know, you're not able to do things properly. How one should see all this and how should <laughs> one not react with anger? Yes, thank you. So there is a here difference between Indian time and German time. <laughs> we have to be aware that there are cultural differences. That when you say in India, five minutes, it usually means 30 minutes. Uh, somehow it's, it became a, a custom due to many years of practice and for everybody it's normal so we might be coming from another culture background, background where you know 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock uh, but no in india 10 o'clock means 10 30 maybe 11. so we should understand that this devotee is their condition like this it's it's not their fault they grew up like this because everybody else around them is doing like that so they are just conditioned like this it's not that they want uh, anything bad. It's not that they want to disrespect you. They're just, you know, conditioned uh, like this. So she, we should not take it for, for bad, you know. We should just be, you know, forgive. And uh, maybe you can tell next time, please try to come on time and try to recondition them, try to reprogram them. Because that program of uh, 
doing things in a certain way. It's, it's been there for many years. And now to change it, it's, it's not so easy. See? So it requires some, some tolerance and some patience and some endeavor to change it. Otherwise, what else you can do? Getting angry at them, it's, it's, it's not a solution. It, just, it doesn't solve anything, doesn't help you, doesn't help them. So it, it's an opportunity to practice uh, tolerance, three and a half you know. We should see it in, in, that, in that positive light. This, oh, this is an opportunity for me to learn to try to be tolerant, <laughs> although it's difficult, but Krishna is mercifully giving me this opportunity. And we should not take offense. Uh, especially if it's not intentional. Okay, thank you. We have to stop here. Thank you all very much. Bhagavatam ki jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai.